What's going on YouTube? We're back again for a average trader update. And let's put it this way, we've definitely been av average traders over this past couple of weeks. It's been, uh, you know, it's, it's not been pretty. Let's put it that way. You know, I, I, I can't imagine to think how many people are cleaning up in this market right now. Because I mean, sure, some people must be doing well. But I think in general, you know, the pain is just widespread. It, it's it's even gone beyond Wall Street. It's gone beyond the financial markets. It's going on to Main Street. We're seeing the price of gas just rising everywhere. This Russia-Ukraine conflict didn't... You know, I think initially the hope was, you know, it might be a couple of week thing. Um, Russia come in, take over Ukraine, and then, you know, they take their stand, and then that is where it goes. But, I mean, sanctions have been coming hard. But Ukrainians, credit to them... They have been putting in a good shift, and to put it mildly, they've really been defending their fort, despite being totally outnumbered and far less resources than what the Russian army has. But they have really held their own, and it's really led to this loggerhead. And you know, the people are fighting back for Ukraine, and so this thing is just not going away. And obviously, Putin now it's in that he he, he can't be perceived to be weak. So he's going in, he's going in hard, he's continuing to go and despite the economic turmoil which is happening to his country right now and the long-term effects which I believe are going to be catastrophic but short-term he's got one goal on his mind and him and his henchmen around him are just 100% committed to that goal and that's what it seems like um, that they're doing and so you know, it's very sad what's going on there. But in terms of the market, it's it's pretty, been pretty brutal. I mean, to be honest, um, those have been following the uh, my average trader portfolio. It's um, It's been tough. I mean, to be honest, I'm a contrarian by nature. And when something just blindly goes up, well, not blindly, but continuously goes up or continuously goes down, that's where I struggle. You know, when we've had these stocks, that have fallen 60, 70, 80%, and they keep on falling another 5, 6, 7, 8% every day. It's just really, really, really difficult to, you know, like these levels mean nothing, you know, sometimes. And it's just, uh, today was just a pretty brutal day. I mean, if we look at the Dow, the Dow was down almost 800 points, and NASDAQ was down over 500, the S&P down just over 11. And um, I'll take you back to the chart and the lines I drew last time. And um, if we actually look um, <clears throat> at what we got here, so I think the last time we uh, looked at this chart, we were trading around the 4,500 level at the time. So the thing is that now we had that pin bar, now we that we had at 4100 in the last podcast we did we bounced up nicely it was a 300 point bounce and now we're trading at well that was the march future let's just go back so if we look at the spy um if we look at the s p right now it's trading at 4200 on the on the cash so if we actually look at this um over the, I think we're just only yeah just about a hundred points off the session low. I mean off the the recent lows yeah just just under a hundred points. This is where we are, and this is the level. So we still got a bit of a way to go. We probably got about a good um I would say seventy points till we reach that. But that as you can see how it was today, we can easily reach that tomorrow. And then after that, there's this channel going down. So if we look at this channel over here, uh, let's just see if I can draw that in. Um, yeah, let's just do it from about yeah this last pivot high to here. So yeah, this is the downtrend down. So I mean, trading depending on how long it takes to get there, but we're looking at just above four thousand, which is the next point where we could potentially see strong support on this down downward trend, and we have resistance at this level here, forty one sixty five. But again. You know, the way the market is, if it's, it could easily just trounce through these levels like it's nothing. But the, it, the, the, it's now in the middle of this downward trend. So, I mean, realistically, I mean, the odds favor a move back down to this low 4,000 mark before we might see some buying come in. But again, the, the thing about this, we can look at it in the charts. We can see what's going on. But 
really it's headline roulette and um the market is reacting on you know any development so if there's any sort of although it's a very small likelihood if there's any type of um agreement or some type of evidence that some type of agreement between ukraine and russia can be made then you know we might see huge rally and we can go back towards this 4500 mark potentially so this is what um what um what i'm looking at and again so the thing is that the technicals might all be saying one thing but all it is is one headline and it'll change the whole um play of what's going on but if we look at um the portfolio right now i've had to take a couple of a few hits um you know paypal and facebook i tried to hope that once we had those huge moves after earnings that we might find a bit of support but no <laughs> it continued to go down facebook um paypal's now like 96 haven't been over 300 at the peak um so that's a 60 percent drop from the high facebook alone that one i thought 225 230 might do it after we dropped 240 off the earnings and then I thought, yeah, I think we could maybe hold 220, but now we're sub 200. And so both of them had to take a bit of a hit on those. But again, luckily it was defined. So although it was not a nice loss, but it was a defined loss. So it wasn't, you know, it could have been worse. And to be honest, a lot of these positions, they are not really holding up well. But the thing is, all it needs is one bounce, which I'm praying. And that's not good to do when you're trading, trading a hope and a prayer. But I mean, that's what I got right now. Because <laughs> these, these trades are have have this predetermined, uh, predetermined risk profile. So there's no point me getting out of them here. So the thing is Roblox, um, SE, SE, oh, that last week reported earnings, Went to almost 160 in the pre-market following their um, from the following their earnings, and now they're trading at 91. is is dropped to more or less 45 percent in in about four days from the pre-market high following their initial earnings. And so, I mean, I, the move on that has been staggering. And um, I got a one. What do I have in SC? Yeah, over here I've got a 115, 120. Uh, Put, but the thing is, that I've got about a month. So, to, you know, it, it, it really depends what the overall market's doing because that 20 bucks can easily be made back up, but it really needs the market to cooperate. Um, same with um, Roblox. Again, all of these are on the edge so far as well. Um, after earnings, they went up 30% and then gave it all back and now it's back below 10 again. I mean, this is just what we're dealing with. Whereas I've tried to fade some of these metal names and obviously that has not been the way. I mean, you've got these commodity and oil names, one sh one way upwards, everything else one way down. <laughs> so, I mean, any type of contrarian play right now has not been working. But I do say this and now I'll, I'll come back to this at one point. I think Alcoa, wheat, oil any of these are stonewall cells the question is how much pain do you have to take before you get on side and and you know that's that's the mark of a bad trader really with that type of thing but it's so hard to to just call the exact top sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and i think you know obviously these commodities still can have a bit bit of a way to go but i've been thinking to myself what's the best way to play it without really um you know without really damaging you know without keep on getting hit and so i've done this trade in wheat so this is a calendar spread so what i've done is i've sold the march 9 put and i bought the june a uh, july 9 put so what i'm doing i'm short term bullish long term bearish and so what i'm sort of hoping is that in the next 20 days wheat can stay above 9 and then over time over the next few months the market will go down and um, we'll get a move back towards nine, eight, seven to a more normal level as soon as this sort of war related um, um, war related spike in commodities sort of subsides a bit. So, I mean, I'm looking at a chart here or if, if I look at wheat, I got wheat here. So this is a chart of wheat. And so, I mean, this is an um, ETF of wheat. Now, look at that. I mean, End of February, we're trading eight. We're now trading at 
12. We've been limit up pretty much every day over the past few days. And so what I did, um, I've sold that nine put. So if by March expiration, which is March the 18th, so in about a couple of weeks, um, we stay above this level over here, I'll collect in the full premium. And then over time, um, look to hope that this starts coming down and this nine put start to print and then take a bit of profit there. So what I've done in this trade is the whole trade cost me $75. Um, and so that's my maximum risk. I thought it was is the best low risk way of trying to play this um, to have it to the downside, but at the same time, minimize my risk. So um, that is what I've done in wheat, um, playing a bit of a calendar, because I mean, just these outright plays short term they just seem to be too one way and it's just not working so that is my um so i'm going to try that with oil as well because i had I, I went short oil again 70 71 and a half just a dollar wide spread but again pff, <laughs> we've seen oil take a look at oil here um take the uso which is the oil etf i mean now we're at 83 um this morning we actually hit 130 in the in the actual cl contract and so uh, we actually went down back below 80 and now we're 83. So we can just see from the high to the low today was a $6 move. So, I mean, we literally can go from 83 back to 70, just, just like that, it, you know, if, if things change. So uh, I've tried to put a bit more of a longer expiration on these. This one, um, the oil contract actually expires on April the 8th. So I've got five weeks. I'm hoping within that five weeks, you know, we might have some type of progress because the thing is I find it hard to just keep on buying it around here. But to be honest, that is probably the winning play because I mean, we're on this real tight upward trend line and it hasn't broken there yet. So if we break it, maybe the technicals might see some um, uh, profit taking, but um, whew, it's, I mean, there's nothing else you can really say of other than, um, you know, I just feel much more comfortable shorting it because we know just one day how dramatically this can all turn, you know, considering literally a week and a half back, we were trading at 65 and now we are at 83. This move has gone up so quick, so fast. I think a lot of this has been priced in, but I mean, we could keep on seeing it. We could potentially see 90 in the USOs. So, um, it will be a you know it will just be interesting to see now what happens um with this particular trade so just a couple of the other trades that i've got on right now i put a robin hood spread that one actually um uh is working out all right robin hood was a bit of an outperformer today randomly um was up today it was up almost 11 12 percent at one point but uh close the day up about four i believe um again i've seen it hover around this nine um 11 buck mark for quite a while and it seems like uh, you know considering the amount of cash they've got about eight billion dollars in cash it seems to be like this seems to be the floor short term anyway unless some other news comes out so if we look at robin hood right now um i've got what, what do we have here yep so you can see you can see how we've consolidated around this level and this 10 buck mark so we, we twice we've bounced strongly off that 10 we've seen two green candles one over here one over there and we've managed to stay above this 10 handle so it looks like we've had this downtrend and it's finding support around this region so that is the reason why i took a um a position on here i did the 11 9 put spread uh, took in seventy five dollars credit for uh, for one hundred and twenty five dollar risk, so um, we'll see how um, you know. I, I gave myself till April the first on that one, so let's just see if we can at least hover around here or get an overall market bounce. So hopefully that might happen. Um, some of the other positions that are close to expiring, um, we have um, on March eleventh Alcoa. I got the 56, 59, 75, 80 calendar and Alcoa is teetering just above the the call, um, the buy call strike at 80. So um, literally at the end of this, um, end of next week is expiring. So um, sorry, not at the end of this week is expiring. 
So I'm I'm hoping that we just get a bit of a contraction because even if this goes to 77, 75 and a half, that's only about a three four percent move from the high. Um, uh, you know, th this could be a winning trade or at least a scratch. So I'm sort of holding pat for this week. There's not really much I can do if if midweek we can get to around 76, 77. I might try to roll it to give me a bit more time. I might roll it a couple of weeks, but for now. Um, Alcoa is, you know, it's bordering bordering on taking a full loss, or you know, might be a profit. So I mean, the week there's four trading days, and a lot can happen in that. So um, we'll we'll have to see what happens. Uh, next week I've got my Netflix, um, Iron Condor expiring as well, and Netflix is another one where got absolutely destroyed for earnings. We had Bill Ackman take a position. We had a nice bounce, but obviously it's just gone down with the market and we're trading at 350 now. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, again, but it could bounce. It could bounce. We've got nine trading days for that one. Um, if we do get a bounce at the 360s, 370s, I might see if I can just take a minimized loss. But I, when it was trading... Um, let me just get a three month chart. So when it was trading around, um, it was trading here for quite a long time and it was holding up, you know, even while this war was happening, but then just the last three days, it really just gave it up and it took out, um, the Feb lows, um, over there. This is on the Ackman announcement where we had that massive rally. So, no, sorry, this was the Ackman announcement, I believe. And then this was a bounce that we had back to almost 400. But um, we've taken out that low and we've also taken out the low back on um, January the 24th. So to be honest, this position don't look good. In fact, any position that's just got any type of long bias don't look good. And I mean, the only saving grace I've got right now is that, you know, when all is said is done, you know, I might be at a grand down, grand 100 on this um, 10K base portfolio that I'm basing it on. But, um, you know, it could be much worse, um, you know, it could be 20, 30 percent down if I was just exposed direct equities. So having these defined risks has really at least minimized the losses and gives me a fighting chance to make it back. Again, we're only in March and, um, you know, all you need is a couple of good months, good runs and, you know, the, the, the portfolio can turn right around. So. I'm not being too dejected yet, but I can't imagine as many people that are, um, you know, jumping with joy right now. It's, it's a definitely a tough market. It's a very tough. I, I can't remember the last market that was this tough in terms of just persistent downside. We obviously had um, subprime, um, not subprime, sorry, uh, the corona, um, yeah, the whole coronavirus epidemic that began in early 2020s, and that was really tough as well. But we did get that bounce back. That was a six-week down cycle before we started to turn. So this one right now has been about three weeks, three to four weeks uh, since the, the the Russian invasion. But the actual downturn has been lasting since November. So we're actually almost into our third month of uh, declines from their all-time highs. So um, the question is, where does where is value found? A lot of these multiples have been slashed massively. So we'll see, um, you know, at some point, you know, a lot of these companies, they're still, they're really good value for their money. They're still growing. Um, Russia does account for very little, you know, 5% of the overall oil um, output. Um, but it's obviously the macroeconomic consequences of this war with all its rising commodities. What's the impact on that on the consumer? Um so that that is obviously, you know, it's likely going to slow down the Fed, although I do definitely think they will hike in the next rate meeting. But well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, there's not really much anyone can, um, you know, no one can say anything right now for certain. You just have to play it as it comes. Um, stay, in, in my opinion, stay defined. Um, you know, know what your risk is. Um, you don't know how low, mu how much lower this can go. I mean, we could keep on running lower, and and uh, so you just want to fight another day. And so by by taking these defined risk spreads at this particular time, I feel like um, for me anyway is um, the best way to go forward, just on a risk profile point of view. But um, yep. But anyway, so this is the update. Um, we'll see what the next. 
you know what this week holds and you know if we do get some relief in some of these commodity prices but um yeah it's just know that you're not alone if you're going through this as well pretty much everyone everyone's getting done up the arse basically so it's it's not good but you know it is what it is um so until the next one please like and subscribe if you liked what you saw today and um and uh, we'll catch you on the next one